Hello. Am I actually live? Can you actually see me? Because I can't see me. So I hope you guys can see it. It had some sort of like error on my side. I don't know why. I assume it's working. You see me and you hear me. All right, good. Good, good, good. I don't know what happened. Like the playback thing had like some sort of error. I don't know what happened. Can you jump in on PayPal with this? Well, what do you mean, Jeremy? I I think I think Patreon lets you sign up with PayPal. YouTube was funky last night too. Hey gamer, how's it going? I dropped some frames right at the beginning of the stream, but like only I dropped 48 frames and then it hasn't dropped any since. So there might have just been like a little hiccup or something, I don't know. I'm lagging. Shouldn't be lagging. There should be no lag. Is it lagging? It shouldn't be lagging. Let me see. It doesn't, there shouldn't be any lag, I don't think. Like, it should be okay, I think. I'm just watching. I'm watching my stream as well to see. Ooh, it's... Wow. The delay is massive, though. Holy moly. Holy moly. How massive is the delay? Probably pretty bad, right? There's the thumb. Jeebus. There's the, there's the, wow. That is the initial. Holy moly. Yeah, the YouTube delay is always bad. Yeah, I mean, it seems that way. It seems pretty bad. Can I do a PayPal jump in? I mean, like, I mean, Jeremy, if you if you sign up on the Patreon with your PayPal right now, then you will get a grab bag right now. But it will be your first one, so you won't be able to get the extra pull because the idea is, is that the extra pull is only given out to those people who are continuing supporters. You'll get a grab bag. You'll get pulls from this box and pulls from here. But you won't get anything from the additional pile. Because the additional pile is only for people who roll over month to month. So no one ever gets one of these in their first month. Right? Yeah, yeah there's definitely a link. So, um, yeah. Like, the, the way it works is the extra pull pile is only for people who, like, support continually, essentially. Like, anyone who supports more than one month. Right, they'll get one from this pile the second month, right? If you want to get just a grab bag, you can just support for one month and get a grab bag and then you're good to go, right? Um anyway, I hope you're all doing well. I hope you're all having a great night. It's Tuesday. The week is almost half over, right? I mean we've only got three days of work left. Hey Tony, how's it going? So, um, we have everybody here. I don't know if, uh, if our lighting is going to be proper or not, but hopefully it is. So we've got Carl, we've got Gamer Geek, we've got Ian, we've got Rick, we've got Father Frodo, we've got Logan, we've got Matt, N, we got Jordan, we got Tony, we got Mike, we got Chris, we got Dustin, we got Broke Honky, we got Ken C, we got Eric, 
We got Evan C. We got Cole F. We got MTG Unpacked. We got Kairu Kairu. We got Raphael. We got Jonathan. We got Eric W. And we've got Milo, or as he likes to be called, eBay. Uh, if you didn't see your name there and you think it should be there, you might need to check your Patreon and just make sure that things are sorted out. There were a couple people who whose payments got declined this month, um, and I sent them a note saying, hey, you know, your payments got declined to see if you can sort things out. Um, I didn't really give them any kind of warning as to when these grab bags would be done, but I generally like to try and do it sometime between the 5th and like the 7th for the grab bags. And so if people don't get their payments sorted out by that time, it's unfortunate. But they get a grab bag anyway. They just don't get the extra pull. That's all. So if you think your name should be in there and it's not, go check your Patreon. Make sure you're all sorted out properly and that kind of stuff. And I'm pretty sure, let me just double check it before we start, I guess. I'm pretty sure that I do have the up-to-date numbers here. Uh -huh. Fine. Two-factor authentication. Gosh darn it. Gosh darn it, Patreon. Did that work? There we go. Yeah, okay. So there you go. We got a new patron, Jeremy. Welcome aboard, Jeremy. Welcome aboard, Milo. So, Jeremy. What color do you like, Jeremy? It worked, it worked, I see it. Red? Okay. There you are, Jeremy. There it is. <laughs> Hello, Milo. Hello. All right. Blue me, blue me. Aren't you already on something else? What are you? You're already on something, aren't you? You're on you're on green. You want blue instead? Is that what you're saying, Milo? You'd prefer blue? No problem, Jeremy. Thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it, man. Alright, so we owe Jeremy a grab bag. And if he stays on till next month, he will get an additional pull as well. We're going to start with the additional pulls. Our pile has um, come down substantially. Um, we haven't had some crazy nonsense hits to add to the pile um, recently, but that's okay. We've had a few stuff. We've had a few things added to the pile for sure. Um, this foil creeping chill turns out to be about like four dollars. That's pretty crazy. We got primal amulet, fetid heath, uh, multani, domri. Merciless Eviction, uh, Nissa, a braid. A braid is still over a dollar for some reason. I had no idea. Gamer Geek, I understand, man. <laughs> I understand. Charter Course is over a dollar now, too. Uh, Search for Azkanta was a nice ad. So, this Angel of Sanctions is not over a dollar. And I like everything to be in the patron pile to be over a dollar or something of note. So what I did is I added Angel of Sanctions to Thalia's Lieutenant. Because Thalia's Lieutenant is about 90 cents or so. Um, and Angel of Sanctions is about 20 cents. So I figure those two together are good. So that's all that was added. These things right here is what we added to the pile this month. Right? And then everything else is stuff that's been left over. So if you see the if you see a full art land, like the waste, or I think there's an island in here as well. Uh, oh, there's a swamp. If you get that, what you do is you get actually uh, you get six full art lands, one of each. So you get plains, island, swamp, mountain, forest, waste. So you get one of each. Um, there there may or may not have been someone. And I know that this is going to be true. 
Um, I know that someone who got it last time, or maybe the time before that, maybe didn't get the lands, or if they did get the lands, they got an extra because they got the one that was in the sleeve, which is not really... Like, the one that's in the sleeve is not supposed to go out in the grab bag. Um, it's supposed to just go back into the pile here, so that I... Because I have actually, like, several stacks of these. So you can see here. This is my little, like, Patreon box. And you can see here I have one set set aside... And then I have another set. So I actually have... These are all actually sets of lands. So there's what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven sets of lands. So that the idea is that the that full art land goes back into the pile. And then uh, it can get drawn again. But that's why I only put two in. Because I figure I don't want to give out more than two of those a month. Just because they're kind of more of like a... They're, they're nice to have, but they're not necessarily of super value or anything like that. So, um, I don't want to, like, flood this with just basic lands, because that's not really what this is about, right? Hey, Corbin, how's it going? You, I, Rick, you said that you had some sick pulls as of late, and it was pretty sweet. Hey, Jay Sheng, how's it going? Welcome, everybody, welcome. We're just getting started here, so we're going to pull the extra pulls for everybody. So we have everybody in the pile. We've got a good pile here. Rick and I have to have a conversation because we have to talk about getting some more deck boxes. I want to get some more deck boxes. So the grand prize this month uh, for one lucky person from the patron pile is going to be one of these two cards. These two cards are a foil wasteland. Ooh, foil wasteland. Or a deck box made by none other than Rick Corwin himself. We have two deck boxes up for grabs. We have this nice shiny red one. And we have this nice shiny green one. They are both uh, like lizard scaled with an eye, a glass eye on them. They uh, snap together with magnets. They have a divider for your sideboard and tokens. It holds the 60 card deck double sleeved. So there you go. So uh, some good options there. Um, last last month we had Eric, Mr. Eric Williamson, uh, won the deck box, and he chose the black deck box that had the Nerdvana logo on it. So I shipped that out to him. Um, so he got that in the mail. Let's put this back over here like so for the time being. I guess we don't need to put that back. We need to leave that out, I guess. So let me just shuffle these up here. You guys can see them. There they are. All right. Someone already got the box you wanted? Well, listen, there's the possibility of more of those boxes being available, right? Because Rick has uh, said that he has no problem uh, making me some more boxes. Um, so, um, of course, I'll pay him for them, obviously. I don't want him to ship them to me. Um, he shipped me these ones for free, and I really appreciate it. And that's why I figured since Rick gave them to me, I might as well give them away to you guys. Because that's what it's all about, right? It's about giving back. Hey, it's not a problem, Rick. Not a, not to worry, sir. Not to worry. <laughs> you haven't had a good pull since 1996, and this is your best chance at the juice? All right. I mean, that's fair, I guess, Milo. That's fair. All right, so we've shuffled that up now. We have everybody in the pile. We'll shuffle this up one more time just to be sure we've got everything sorted. All right. Who's ready? Who's ready? Dustin is first. Dustin is walking home with a set of full art lands. 
There you go, Dustin. Congratulations. Next up, Cole. Walking away with a fetid Heath. Thank you so much, Cole. Congratulations. Ken C is walking away with a heroic intervention. There it is. Hey, Eric, how's it going? Eric can tell you all how his new deck box is handling. I hope it's handling well, Eric. Uh, Eric uh, is walking away with a Dream Salvage. A nice little Shadowmoor Uncommon. Mike V is walking away with that Domri Chaos Bringer. There it is. Congratulations, Mike. A nice new shiny mythic Planeswalker. Ian is walking away with that Mindrack Demon that is paired with an Ogre Slumlord. Both about a dollar a piece. There it is. So thank you, Ian. Congratulations. Jordan W. is walking away with that Foil Squirrel Nest. I had this conversation with Jordan at... at <laughs> I had a conversation with Jordan at Magic Fest Toronto. And he was like, that Squirrel Nest, man. I want it so bad. Well, Jordan, I guess luck was on your side, sir. Congratulations. There it is, that foil squirrel nest. Matt, Matt N, or the real Viking MTG, is walking away with a rootbound crag, a nice staple land right now in standard. Milo, all right, Milo, what are you looking for? You want some you want some juice? You want some juice? How about Anissa? You like planeswalkers? I hope you like green planeswalkers. I know you said you wanted to be on a blue land, so maybe you prefer blue planeswalkers, but nice Nissa for you. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Raphael is walking away with that Descent of the Dragons. There it is. Squirrel Nest, yeah man. Zorziko Squirrel Nest. Foil Squirrel Nest. Jonathan. Is walking away with a Zergo the Helm Smasher that is also uh, paired with a Pili Pala from Shadowmoor. The Pili Pala is about a dollar almost, and uh, Zergo is just a nice mythic to go with it. So there you go, Jonathan. I hope you enjoy. Tony, Tony's here. Tony, you're walking away with a curious obsession. I hope you uh, need that because it actually is like a two or three dollar card right now. Crazy, crazy enough with all the uh, mid-range blue decks going around. Carl! Carl's walking away with a foil clifftop retreat. There you go, Carl. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoy your foil buddy land or check land or whatever you want. What do they call them? And the battlefield tapped unless you control a mountain. I would say buddy land. That's how I would call it. Chris! Chris R is walking away with that merciless eviction. This card's such a good card in in Commander. Like, it's just so good. Exiling, like, literally everything. <sighs> My goodness. Choose one. Exile all artifacts, or exile all creatures, or exile all enchantments, or exile all planeswalkers. Yeah, everyone calls them check lands. I like calling them buddy lands, because you need to have one of those lands in play. Rick C is walking away with that Marari's Wake. Rick, your Mr. B uh, EDH deck just got another sweet addition. Marari's Wake is amazing. It's such a good card. Creatures you control get plus one plus one, and whenever you tap a land for mana, add one mana to your mana pool of any type that land produced. <whistles> All right, Rick. Congratulations, Rick, to that one. Logan, walking away with an Esper Charm, paired with a Stolen Strategy. So a nice Battle Bond Rare with a nice Esper Charm. So there you go, Logan. Congratulations, I hope you enjoy. Eric! Eric W's here. What's Eric gonna get? Eric, you're getting in a braid. A braid is still over a dollar for some reason. I don't know why. I scanned it literally half an hour ago. Broke Honky. Walking away with a Charter Course. Another staple for Standard right now. Charter Course is seeing a lot of play in a number of decks. Father Frodo is walking away with that Shield of Cauldra. Man, Shield of Cauldra is, cr is a good card, too. My goodness. MTG Unpacked is walking away with that Hadana's Climb. I know he's more of a fan of Merfolk, but hopefully he's okay with... Or he's more of a fan of Goblins, I should say. This is more for Merf Merfolk, but hopefully he's okay with that. Gamer Geek, 
You're walking away with a manamorphos. Gamer Geek, I hope you're here. I hope you enjoy. That right there is like a like a twenty dollar card right now. It's insane. Manamorphos. Twenty dollar common from Shadowmore. Kairu Kairu. So close. There's one person left. Kairu Kairu, you're walking away with a nice foil promo steel leaf champion. I hope you need that. Let me know if you uh, if you don't need the promo. If you don't need the promo, we'll pull something else for you, okay? All right. Last, but certainly not least, we've got ourselves an Evan. Mr. TCG Value Hunter. One of my local, one of my local boys. Located in Toronto, I believe, is where he's at. So, uh... Evan, uh, Evan and I go back quite a ways. Uh, he's been uh, a member of the channel for quite some time. So, there we go. Finally, it's out of the pile. <laughs> the, <laughs> the, the promo? So, we'll talk about this in a sec, too, before we start getting into the grab bag. Since I have so many of you here that are patrons, I want to talk to you guys about something. And since you're all here, it's a good time to do it. Is Evan here tonight? I don't think he is. Which is unfortunate, but um, let me ping him on Discord. And we'll have the chat, because he just messaged me on Discord like the other day. Because he was actually one of the people that, that his, his, his payment didn't get processed properly. And so I messaged him and he messaged me back and was like, oh man, I'm sorry about that. I've got it fixed now. All right, so chat, this is the question we ask ourselves. Do we want to vote for Evan? Do you want me to roll a die? Or does, or does, like, so does chat want to vote? Left or right? Or should I roll a die and just say, like, odd, even? What do you guys think? Because Evan, I, I pinged him on Discord, but he's not online, so he may not see it. Um, well, that's what I'm thinking, Rick, is I'll just roll a 20-sided die, because it's all I really have on my desk. <laughs> I mean, I don't think I can find a dice anywhere. I don't think I can find dice anywhere. There's definitely not, like... Just like, there's definitely not enough dice around here. There's definitely not enough dice around here. Like, there's definitely not. There's definitely not enough dice around here. What? Well, how many else we got here? Oh, oh look, there's, there's still more. Oh my goodness, there's some hiding under a receipt. Oh look, a six-sided die. We found one. Is there more? Oh my goodness. I don't know if I can find enough. Oh look, there's some other six-sided dice. There's the salmon dice. These are Pokemon dice that Salmon gave me. Eric, I have this argument with a lot of people all the time about spin downs versus actual dice. Because a d20 is 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 not in a spin down fashion. I agree with you. The, here's the difference, though. The spin, like the a, a regular d20, is not randomized. It is always the same. So the sides of the dice are always the same. Um. So, like, you know, the 20 is always opposite of the 1, and, like, so on and so forth, right? Um, but the difference is, is that the probability of rolling any number on any 20-sided dice is the same no matter what order you put the dice in. No matter what order you put those dice in, the probability of rolling a number on those 20-sided dice is the same. So, it doesn't matter. <laughs> hey, Unpacked, how's it going? 
You want me to roll all of them? And then and then divide to get an, the average? Dear God. You, you people just want to see the world burn. I'm not going to roll all of them because there's way too friggin' many. There's way too friggin' many. But I will roll a handful of them. Okay, are you ready? Okay, we got a three. We got a six. We got a two. Okay, let's put them in order. There's a 15 here. There's another two here. There's another three here. Ooh, there's a crit. We got a crit. There's another six here. 15, 5, 10. We rolled some pretty high numbers, actually. Two 15s. A 19, an 18, another 19. We, we were like, we, we are in a weird place here. With this roll. Right? Because we rolled two twos, two threes, a five, two sixes, a seven, a ten, two fifteens, an 18, two 19s, and a 20. You checking to see if they're loaded? That's right. <laughs> and go with chat's vote. <laughs> it's rigged. It's rigged. Um, okay, so what do we got? Two, four, ten, fifteen, uh, twenty-seven. 34, 44, and then another 30, so 74, and then 18 is 80, 92, and then two 19s is 38, we were at 92, so that's 8, that's 100, that's 130, 150, exactly, is that right? Did I add that up properly? Am I, am I bad at math? It's possible that I'm bad at math. It's possible that I'm bad at math. Hashtag math. That's right. Evensies. 150. So Evensies, we said, was right. So this is the card that Evan's going to get. Evan is walking away with a deck box. So I will message Evan and let him know that he won a deck box and that he will get to pick because I need him to pick what color he wants, red or green, because I don't want to just give him one. I want him to pick. So... Hopefully he's okay with the way we determined this. Hopefully he's okay. That means we have a foil wasteland left still. All right. Now, let's talk about this stuff right here. Okay, so. Someone walked away with a promo. And I know a couple people, like Tony, um, have expressed you know, disinterest in promos in the past. I have a number of cards here that I got from my LGS that I was thinking of adding to the patron pile just because it's stuff that's kind of cool and it's mostly promos. You guys don't really care about that stuff. Um, now, something else, though, to, to think about is that I also have these that I picked up. Um... So, 
You gave, well, I mean, you did give me the promo, but that promo that was in the pile wasn't from you, I don't think. Or maybe it was. Oh, yeah, it was the one that you gave me, wasn't it? Because I already had one in my binder. But I still have one, so I'm, I'm treating the one that I have as the one you gave me. How about that, Tony? That's the plan. So, the idea here is that I have a playset of Elvish Rejuvenators, a playset of Conclave Tribunals, I have a Scrap Trawler, a Murder, and a Fire Mines Research, okay? You like them, but not in the pile. Well, so, this is the thing. is like, I, you know, if we get a bad month where we're going to need to add stuff, I think that this is stuff that I'm going to add to the pile, okay? So what this is, and I'm going to open this now so that you guys can see it, I actually have... I have four of these. These are sealed. I have four of these things that are sealed, okay? So the sealed ones are the ones that you'll win, so they will still be sealed when they get to you, okay? I'm opening this one because this is mine. I'm going to open this one to show you what it is, and these ones will be mine. It'll be in my personal collection, okay? And this is something I picked up at the uh, Magic Fest, Toronto, okay? And this is something I'm thinking of adding to the pile as a... Like, so you'll get a sealed pack. So there's only be three of them. Only three of them. Now, these are the Grand Prix lands from last year. Okay. So they're, they are, in fact, as I understand it, or at least is what I would imagine. They are the foil Grand Prix lands that were the last Grand Prix lands ever printed because the new Grand Prix lands will most likely say Magic Fest on them, if anything, because Grand Prix are now no longer a thing, correct? This is my understanding. Now, maybe maybe Wizards has a different plan. Maybe Wizards will still print them with Grand Prix and what have you. But I think that uh, they are pretty sweet and... Um, I'll probably add those to the pile as uh, as a thing that you can get. So you will get a full set, right? Now, there'll only be like one... There'll be a card in the pile that represents one of these packages, right? And someone might get, get it each month, right? Until they're gone. And the shiny is real with that. That in the pile, yes. <laughs> well, so... And this is the thing. So the thing I'm thinking is like, I think what I would do is I would put these in, into the pile as a sealed package of a playset. So you get a playset of these from the pile, rather than opening this and putting them individually in, because I don't think that's worth it. And I agree with you there, Eric, is that like putting a single promo Elvish Rejuvenator or Conclave Tribunal into the pile is not really useful. I think putting in uh, these as a playset is totally fine. Um, so... Carl, have a great night, man. Thank you for stopping by. I'm sorry we didn't get to the rest. Sleeves now. Yes, you're absolutely correct. I do need to sleeve them, so. We got four. We need one more. So that's what I'm thinking, right? And so, like, the other promos that you see here, like the Murder, the Scrap Trawler, um, those types of things, those would just be sort of like, maybe I put in a wild card that says you can get the promo of your choice from the promos I have available, and then you get to pick which one you want, right? Um, I think that's fair. And then if you don't want a promo, we just give you an additional, we just give you a different pull, right? And the promo card goes back into the pile uh, for the following month. So anyway, there you go, right? So there there it is. So these ones go into my collection because I want to have them as a memory of the of my first GP, right? Um, and then the other ones will be put into the pile as giveaways. So shiny lands that you could get. Okay, so we'll put those over to the side for the moment. So I think that's okay. Like, I mean, like, I think, like, what I'll do is, like, as I gain more promos and stuff, I'll put them into a pile. And then it's like a single card in the in this patron pile represents you get a promo, right? And then the promos come out and you get to pick one. And if you don't want one, then you can get an, a different, like you just get the next pull off the pile, right? And then the card that represents the promo will go back into the pile the following month. 
I don't do any rips or flips. Booster therapy. I definitely don't do any rips or flips. I actually, um... I actually, um, don't destroy magic cards. At all. In fact, if I find a magic card that's in a really, in really bad shape and it's like a useless card, I still don't. Like, I'll, I will treat it as if it needs to be, you know, kept in a good condition. Even if it's already in a terrible condition. So, um... I mean, unless it's absolute, absolute jank. I've had a couple cards get destroyed sort of, like, by accident. Because they just, like, were on the edge of a table and they fell off and, and got bent. Because, like, you know, the chair rolled over them and I didn't know they were on the floor kind of thing. They ended up just being, like, most of the time it's just, like, a basic land or, like, a common or uncommon from some set. But I generally don't, um, rip and flip cards. Um, and I don't think I ever will. So, don't don't get your hopes up for that kind of thing. Because it's not, not really the kind of person I am. Tell that to basics with Sharpie on them. <laughs> that is... You got me there. You got me there, Milo. I'm wrecking up basics. This is actually a thing. So, just so most of you are aware, if you ever meet me in person and want me to sign a card for you, I will be very, very hesitant to sign anything for you except a basic land. Eric's been demanding it from you. <laughs> Don't let him, don't let him push you around, Eric, Eric, you be, you be a good, you be a good guy, and don't, don't demand things of people. I mean, you can demand whatever you want, really. They don't have to follow. Yeah, it's, it's just a suggestion. Exactly. I throw away foreign cards because I'm still learning English. <laughs> oh, Rick. Rick, you are hilarious. All right, let's put that away over there. We've got everybody, right? Evan got that. Okay. And we've got Jeremy here. So, Jeremy, we're going to do your grab bag first. Sign my moxes. Listen, like, this is the thing. Like, I saw the clip. I saw the clip on Twitter, I think it was, where someone at the latest Magic Fest, Magic Fest LA, asked uh, Brian from the Tolarian College, Tolarian, uh, the professor, to sign a box topper mana vault. Why? I mean, I guess they just wanted his signature on that type of card because, you know, that's, you know, it is very things. It's very uh, college-y, and maybe that's, like, one of the professor's things that he likes the mana vault a lot and blah, 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 right? But, like, to get him to sign a topper, like, I would, I just could, I could never do it. It just wouldn't happen. I'd be like, the only person that should be signing this card for you is the artist. If anybody. If anybody should be signing it, it would be the artist. That's my personal opinion. All right, Jeremy. First thing you've got here is a Kami of the Crescent Moon. And your second rare is a Yehenny's Expertise. And then you've got a Krenko's Enforcer. A Hedron Archive. Pick the Brain. Erratic Mutation, Murmuring Phantasms, and Dromosaur. Good old lizard. Look at that little guy. What a weirdo. Richard Garfield, maybe. Yeah, maybe Richard Garfield. I agree with you there, Becca, maybe. And, ooh, a foil rare. Look at that foil rare that you get. You get a Providence. I'm sure that's totally playable, right? Seven mana sorcery. You may reveal this card from your opening hand if you do at the beginning of the first upkeep. Your life total becomes 26. And it's a sorcery that just makes your life total 26. Don't know how that's relevant in any game format. It can bring you back from the brink of death, I guess. I, I, I don't know where that card is played, if anywhere. A Knight's Whisper. There it is. So this is a nice little uncommon or uncommon worth a dollar or more. So there it is. It's a nice little two mana sorcery that says uh, you draw two cards and lose two life. Two cards for two mana is pretty nice. There you go, Jeremy. Thank you so much for your patronage. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoy your grab bag for this month. And we need to get you a bag here like this. And there you are. There it is. Now, before I get carried away... Do I have? I do. Haha. -ha. 
we need one of these because this is what I do. I put these all in here like this, and then that way it's all sorted for me to put them into the envelopes. Perfect. Okay, Evan C is next. Evan walked away with that that uh, deck box, so let's see. He's going to get a Blooming Marsh on top of that deck box, along with a Darien, the King of Keljor, or Jeldor, or whatever. It depends on how you whether you pronounce it. You got a Jar, uh, Jar, uh, Juru's Resolve, Adaliz, the Cinder Wind, Orator of Ojitai, Coral Helm Guide, Ravenous Rats, and a Goblin Gardener. Goblin Gardener! And your foil is a Sigh of the Shinobi. Sigh of the Shinobi was such a sweet card in 25. It was such a good card in Limited in that format. Oh, man. MTG Hermit. Just wait till you see what you pulled, sir. Wrath. What's Wrath? Did I miss something? Uh, <laughs> You got his autograph on a uh, Winds of Wrath card. Oh. Yeah, Bloodbraid Elf there. So there you go. Nice common or uncommon with a dollar or more for you, Evan. Thank you so much for your patronage. I really appreciate it. I'm, I'm only catching half, half things. You're at work. Oh, no. That's not great. Well, let me just ta tell you this. If you can hear me, uh, you got the card that you and I talked about at the, at the Magic Fest. Kairu Kairu, walking away with that Steel Leaf Champion promo. Exquisite Firecraft. Man, that card was quite a few dollars when it was in Standard. And Harness the Storm. Sea Legs, a Tarka's Monument. Nephilia Academy, which shouldn't be in there. A land, these silly lands. Ground Assault. Nick Netcaster Spider and Seal of Strength. And your foil, got to get your foil first. We always forget the foil. Foil is a vessel of nascency. And your common or uncommon with dollar more is a nice lightning bolt. There it is. Nice lightning bolt to go with your two red rares. There you go, Kairu Kairu. Thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it. And there it is. Boom. Bickety bam. Gamer Geek is next. Gamer Geek is here, I believe. Yes, there. And uh, you were walking away with that sweet Manamorphose, which is like a $20 common, like absolutely insane. And you're getting two grab bags, so let's pull your first one. Pull your first grab bag. Ooh, how about an Unnatural Selection from Apocalypse? Very cool. And a Living Death from 25. Blur of Blades, Throttle, Dawn Treader Elk, Abzan Kinguard, Tekinos Cavalry, and carbonize your foil. Your ah, your foil's a will bender, the card that everyone always assumes is morphed. <laughs> He's got a morph. It's obviously a will bender. It is indeed a will bender and a molten rain as your first common or uncommon with a dollar or more. There it is. Now you can have a foil will bender to be like, yeah, it is will bender. You're right. But not only is it a will bender, but it's a foil will bender, and. Abbot of Carol Keep, another good card that was very good in Standard. And Ether Spouts, a sweet uh, global board bounce. Uh, McKindy Aeronaut, Nightbird's Clutches, Stencia Masquerade, Abzan Runemark, First Volley, and Phyrexian Debaser. And your foil is an Elvish Aberration, another sweet card foil from 25 and you're walking away with a knight's whisper there you go there it is thank you so much gamer geek for your continued support i really appreciate it i hope you enjoy your grab bag there it is like this get in there there it is ha 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 mtg unpacked i don't know if you're still here but um do you want me to pull your grab bag online or offline? You tell me. Okay, we'll move on. Father Frodo. YouTube says to guide you, guard your private parts. Oh, yes. Don't forget, everyone. Always guard your private parts. Father Frodo's walking away with that shield of Caldera. And, or, Cal, yeah, Caldera, right? Yeah. 
You're getting a Bishop of Rebirth and a Rally the Ancestors. Hitchclaw Recluse, Woodweaver's Puzzle Knot, Avon Rift Watcher, Formless Nurturing, Sewing Salt, and Wake of Vultures. And your foil is an enthralling victor. And a Secura Tribe Scout. Very nice little uh, uncommon there. I guess it's not even an uncommon. It's a common. It's like a $2 common. It's pretty nice. So there you go, Father Frodo. Thank you so much for your continued support. I really appreciate it. There's your grab bag for March. I hope you enjoy. Mr. Broke Honky is next. There he is. Broke Honky's walking away that chart, of course, which is like a $2 uncommon now. Crazy. Crazy, crazy. Walking away the mythic Comet Storm. Who doesn't like a little Comet Storm in their life? Everyone loves Comet Storm. Architect of the Untamed. Nizumi Cutthroat. Crypt Sliver. Salivating Gremlins. Wild Heart Invoker. Stir the Graves. And Mog Fanatic. Your foil is a foil rare. Foil Void from Eternal Masters. Look at that. You're walking away with Mythics and foil rares and a young Pyromancer as your uncommon or uncommon worth a dollar or more. Your common or uncommon worth a dollar or more. That is what I meant to say. All right. There you go, Broke Honky. Thank you so much for your patronage. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoy your grab bag for this month, and thank you so much for your support. Eric! Eric W., you're here. Walking away with that braid, which is like a $1.50 or some nonsense. Aegis Angel. <whistles> nice. And an Admiral's Orders. We're a weird counterspell. Repeal, another counterspell, but all, a better counterspell in my opinion. A Silver Chase Fox, a Blight Soil Druid, Great Corn Kushok, Genju of the Cedars, and Repeal the Indomitable. Your foil is a Copper Horn Scout from Scars of Mirrodin. Very nice. And your common or uncommon worth a dollar or more is a Lightning Bolt. Who doesn't like a good Lightning Bolt every now and then, right? It's always nice to have a Lightning Bolt. As they always say, bolt the bird. That's the, that's the saying that I know. Bolt the bird. So thank you so much, Eric, for your support. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoy your grab bag for this month. Logan Bloom is next. We got an Esper charm with something else. I can't remember what it was that was in there. Some rare. We've got Temet, Vizier of Naktama. Or Nak... Nak... Naktamun. Tamun? Oh, jeez. And a Green Wheel Liberator. There you go. Always bolt the bird. See? Eric knows. Mighty Leap. Choking Fumes. Cult of the Waxing Moon. Right into Being. Genju of the Spires. And a Wizard Mentor. Return Wizard Mentor and target creature you control to its owner to owner's hand. Nice. And you got a foil disperse to go with your wizard. Now you can build the wizard bounce deck. And you're getting an animate dead as your common or uncommon worth a dollar or more. So there you go, Logan. Thank you so much for your patronage. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoy your grab bag for this month. There it is. There it is. We're going to try and get these mailed out tomorrow. That's why we're doing this now. See? Okay, we've got Rick. Rick is walking away that sweet Marari's Wake. Who, who doesn't like a little Marari's Wake every now and then, right? It's um, it's like the best part of waking up is Marari's in your hand or on in your on your board. I, I, listen, I'm not a songwriter, okay? Harsh mentor as your first rare, and pyrokinesis. Okay, we're giving you red cards, Rick. Oh, war and pilferers. That's not red. Sphere of the sun. All right, let's get some fixing for you, Rick. You got your five color deck, right? Sphere of the sun. Enters the, battle, enters the battlefield tapped with three charge counters on it. And you can tap it to remove a charge counter and add a man of any color. Gissa's, bi uh, Gissa's Bidding. Ward Scale Dragon. Genju of the Fields. And Rune of Protection Blue. There you go. And your foil is a Kumano's Blessing. Sweet foil from uh, Betrayers of Kamigawa. And your, your common or uncommon with other more is a Price of Progress. 
I will take a look at it in a sec, Gamer Geek, after we're done the grab bags here. And Rick gets two grab bags, so let's pull his second one. Second grab bag is a Stone Haven Outfitter and a Slag Fiend. Ooh. Along with Agoraphobia, Demon Horn, Ongoing Investigation, Manolith, another fixing. Another fixing, Rick. Yes. Doom Traveler and Seal of Cleansing. Your foil is a Horizon Spell Bomb. Nice. Nice. And a Bajuka Bog as your common or uncommon with a dollar or more. Nice. It's lagging in the video. Someone was complaining about lag in the video earlier too, uh, Corbin. Um, and then it just kind of went away. So I don't know why it's lagging. It shouldn't be lagging. Um, let me just double check, make sure I'm not like dropping any frames. I am not dropping any frames. So my connection to YouTube should be fine. Um, I don't know why it would be lagging, to be completely honest. Chris is walking away with that Merciless Eviction, which is a sweet removal card. You're walking away with an Ivory Tusk Fortress. And a Cruel Ultimatum. That is a card. Pyrite Spellbomb. Land of War Empath. Hellpack Resurgence. Resplendent Griffin. Faithful Squire, which turns into uh, Cassio Memory of, the, of Loyalty. And a Nausea. Good old Nausea. All right, foil, foil act of heroism, and your common or uncommon with a dollar or more is a remand. Very nice. Remand is a nice little counter spell for sure, worth a couple bucks. So there you go, Chris. Thank you so much for your patronage. I really appreciate it. That's your grab bag for March. I hope you enjoy. All right, Carl. Carl had to leave early, unfortunately. So he doesn't. He's gonna have to come back and watch this. So hi, future Carl. Hi. Hello, future Carl. We've got a foil cliff top retreat, is what he's walking away. He gets two grab bags. So he's first one, Tunnel Ignis, and Gold Knight Castigator, Rakdos Rage Mutt, Arbiter Ghoul, Oppressive, uh, Obsessive Skinner, I should say, Undead Servant, <laughs> Kalo Jushi, which turns into Jaraku, the Interloper, the Interloper, yeah, and. A cackling fiend. Ooh, look at that guy. A 2-1 zombie for four. Seems like good value. When it comes into play, each of your opponents chooses a card and discards a card. Chooses and discards a card, I should say. All right, Gamer Geek. Have a great night. Thank you so much for tuning in. And a foil, Stampeding Rhino. And your common or uncommon with dollar more is Swift Foot Boots. So that's your first grab bag, Carl. Let's pull your second grab bag. But boom. Lupine Prototype. I remember when people were like saying that that card was going to be like super pricey when that set came out. And a giant Solifuge. What a bunch of stinker rares right there. Be Fuddle. Concussive Bolt. Stitch Wing Scab. Giant Growth. Hired Muscle, which turns into Scar Maker, and a Magnify. That's a cool common, though. One mana instant. All creatures get plus one, plus one until end of turn. But all creatures, not just yours, your opponents, too. Slate Street Ruffian Foil from Gates Crash. Very nice. And your common or uncommon with a dollar or more is Forbid, which is a nice little blue uncommon. Interrupt. It's an interrupt. Can you guys even see that? It's an interrupt. Look at that. It's not an instant. It's not a sorcery. It's an interrupt. Make sure that you know the terminology. It means that you can interrupt people with it. That's what it means. Right? It's faster than an instant, right? Listen, I don't want to... I'm not spreading misinformation. I'm, I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> Tony, walking away with that curious obsession. A Laboratory Maniac. Wow, Laboratory Maniac is a sweet card. And a Hanawar Battlements. Aerial Predition. Tenacity. Stormwing Dragon. Foundry Assembler. Moonlight or Moonlit Strider. And Nature's Panoply. And it has buyback. That's true. It does have buyback. 
Boom, foil, undying rage. And your common or uncommon with dollar or more is a him to Turok. Good old him to Turok. It's a sweet card, too. So there you go, Tony. That's your grab bag for this month. And I owe Tony a box. Tony has asked for a box uh, of Core 2019. Um, and he pledged at that level this, this month. So I will be opening up a box for, of 2019 for Tony. That will be happening uh, once it gets here. Um, I had to order it in because my LGS tried to charge me much more than MSRP for um, a box. And I was like, I can't. I can't do it because I set the Patreon value at like basically just over what MSRP is to cover essentially me shipping the cards. So like I literally make nothing off the Patreon box tier. I make no money on that at all. It's It basically covers the cost of the box and the shipping and that's all it covers. <laughs> so, so I ordered it in because I was able to get it from a store for MSRP. So sweet. Awesome. Um, anyway, Jonathan is walking away with that Zergo and something else. I can't remember what. But MSRP no longer exists. Well, yes, I, I agree with you. But anyway, I got it for the initial sell price. Put it that way. Jonathan, what are you getting for yours? Jonathan's getting Flame Blast Dragon. And Inkwell Leviathan. Very nice big... Uh, big old whale there. Mighty Leap, Goblin Lookout, Dark Thicket Wolf, Open Into Wonder, Cloaked Siren, and Hunted Ghoul. Nice. And your foil is a Lifecraft Cavalry. And your common or uncommon with dollar or more is a Wall of Omens. Very nice wall. Sweet little two drop 04 that draws you a card. Very nice, very nice. Yeah, I said all my tiers like that. Um, so all the tiers that are above, like, the grab bag stuff, essentially those tiers are set to a value that essentially the the amount of money I get in American converts to Canadian just above what the price it is for me to buy the, the product plus pay the tax here in Ontario plus cover the shipping of the product. Like, that. that's essentially what those are set to. I don't actually make any money off those. It's just... Essentially, like, you guys are essentially just buying the box from me instead of from your LGS. That's basically what it comes down to. Um, I get to make the content for the channel. That's basically what it comes down to. You're basically buying me a video to put on YouTube, which I appreciate wholeheartedly, Tony. So thank you. Um, anyway, so that'll be, like, later this week or early next week that I film that because it should be here by Monday at the latest um, because I ordered it um, last night. And uh, I didn't get the shipping notification yet, but it should come. The shipping notification should come either late today or tomorrow is my guess. And if I don't have a shipping notification from them by tomorrow end of day, I'm going to message them and be like, hey, what's going on? Anyway, Raphael has got uh, Descent of Dragons, the nice little mythic. And a Lost Legacy, which is a, actually a pretty nice little rare. And Guardian of Tazim. Along with a Bloodstone Goblin, Avon Surveyor, Crackdown Construct, Frilled Sandwalla, Shinka Gatekeeper, and a Dromosaur. There's another Dromosaur. And your foil is a Squadron Hawk. Aw, oh, yeah, now you need three more foil Squadron Hawks. Sorry, Raphael. Ooh, but you're getting a Mishra's Bobble. Very nice, very nice. There it is. People can't complain about uh, Card Kingdom charging double MSRP for product if there is no MSRP. Well, I mean, that's sort of, yeah. Um, so the the real problem is, is that it's just the real issue with it. I haven't actually seen the articles or anything about what's going on, but I talked with the guy at my LGS about it and he was like really upset about it. Um, but basically, my understanding is that because... They're, get, they're basically doing away with MSRP because they're basically going to be selling everything on their own store. Um, prices are just going to go haywire. It's just going to go crazy. Like, it's it's going to be it's going to be absolutely insane. Every LGS is just going to price things the way they think they, they can make prop, make the most amount of profit. 
that's just what it's going to come down to. And no one will be able to argue because it'll be like, well, I can't order online because I don't have a credit card or I can't, you know, travel two cities over to get the cheaper price. Like it's, it's 